clamp lamp that shines onto this Monstera is a regular light bulb. It is not a grow light, and we'll get into why it works for me. Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley, and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about lighting, and this is by huge request. There was many of you who reached out to me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube asking for a lighting video specifically for seedlings. And the reason why I differentiate that is because you don't need the Cadillac of lights in order to grow seeds. That may be something that most influencers or plant people don't want you to know, but the truth is that that is the case. Now, there are some factors that need to play into whether or not you choose just a regular light bulb versus a grow light and how to make a regular light bulb work for a seed starting setup. Now, all things aside, if you are using a regular light bulb, I suggest starting your seeds just a bit later than what is typically done by most growers in your zone. The reason being is because eventually you will need that more intense light and a basic light bulb isn't going to get you there regardless of what you try to do. So the later the start, the better if you're just using classic light bulbs, but overall it is possible. An example of using regular light bulbs is the one behind me. That light bulb inside of that clamp lamp that shines onto this Monstera is a regular light bulb. It is not a grow light and we'll get into why it works for me and exactly why I have that set up behind me. Grow lights that are meant for plants are expensive and it is because they have a very specific spectrum and a intensity that a plant needs. Now I do know you can get grow lights in some areas at the Dollarama and if you are able to get those then please do. So put aside your egos, today's video is for those of us that may not financially be able to purchase a grow light in whatever capacity that may be, or for those of us that are starting out and don't wanna invest a ton of money in seed starting equipment if we don't enjoy it. And we don't know if we enjoy it because we haven't tried. This is the ultimate beginner setup, or it's for the setup of someone who's overplanted and gone a little rogue this year and uh, maybe need some supplemental lighting but has already broke the bank on the collection that they have and i may or may not be referring to myself in that statement i will leave links down below for all the proper light bulbs that you need in order to make this happen they are amazon affiliate links so if you choose to purchase from them it does benefit the channel okay let's break the internet with this statement of using regular light bulbs so you can use regular bulbs, but again, we're looking for a specific wavelength. Wavelength is what makes up the spectrum. So because we're using a regular light bulb, we won't have a full spectrum or a complete spectrum, or even maybe a specific spectrum for what we're looking for. So because we are looking for foliage growth and we're not actually looking for flowering uh, growth, we can work in the spectrum or the wavelength of blue specifically, because that's what seedlings enjoy. It's also what I want out of my mastera is I want vegetative growth. I don't want flowering. So because I can rely mostly on the blue wavelength, I'm able to achieve this. I actually have new growth on this monstera right now, um, just to prove and drive home the point that regular light bulbs will do the trick. Now, red light is what is used for flowering systems, and that is what my Mars Hydro light does. It's what the LED light above the Mars Hydro has, and it's actually what the T5s that are on this ladder, you can't see all the way to the top of the ladder, but there's two layers there, um, each one of which has a T5 light, and that one also has red light with it too. The thing is, is when we have red light, we're able to get flowering. But because we're just looking for vegetative growth and we're not looking for flowering yet, the blue light works just fine, especially in a seedling situation. So what we're aiming for when we're looking for a regular light bulb or inexpensive grow light light bulb, we are actually looking for the temperature in Kelvins. 
specifically 6,000 to 7,000 Kelvins is kind of the range we want. These, to make it simple, are labeled as daylight or cool light. That's what the package will say. I know you've seen these. That is the white light that you're looking for when you want to use a regular light bulb for plants. Those yellow or the um, kind of tinged ones, those aren't going to work for plants. So because we're dealing with a light that isn't engineered for plants and it doesn't have um, as much intensity to it, we actually want to place that light bulb relatively close to the surface of the plant. Now, if it comes to germinating seeds, we want it anywhere from five to 12 inches above that soil surface. The key here is to not allow the soil to get above 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. That is because we don't want to bake the soil and we don't want to bake the plant or its roots. So if we can stay in that wheelhouse, that is ideal. You may need a thermometer to make sure that this is the case. Now, once the plant sprouts and comes out of the ground, we will then lift that light up as the plant uh, moves upwards. And this is gonna prevent against burning the foliage. And you'll have to do this with a regular grow light regardless. Once the plant uh, touches a T5 bulb or anything that's essentially not an LED bulb, even in some cases LED bulbs, for example, my Mars Hydro did it, it will burn the foliage because of the intensity of the light or because of the actual heat that is emitted. So you do want to adjust your light as your plant grows upwards, but you want to keep it close enough so that you don't end up with a leggy seedling. So 12 inches, I find, usually is enough. So again, my Monstera, I have it about 24 inches, but that is because you can't see it, but there is like a new bright green growth in there. So it technically is 12 inches above that new growth that is happening on that Monstera. Again, because we're dealing with not necessarily all the wavelengths, we're not dealing with a full spectrum or um, a intense spectrum. And then we have the combination of the heat and the distance and all that stuff. We do need to leave our lights on just a touch longer than we normally would when we're using regular light bulbs to grow plants. And that usually means about 14 to 16 hours on while we have them indoors. This is just going to ensure that we get enough photosynthesis and enough action happening to fuel the fire of growth for that plant. Again, this is temporary, it's a temporary thing. We may only be doing this for a month or two. so. If you can, 14 to 16 hours is ideal. Get a timer, it's gonna help you a ton, or turn it on when you leave for work, and then don't turn it off until you go to bed at night. One hack I like to use when I am using regular light bulbs to either grow seedlings or plants is actually amplifying that light, and I generally do this with tinfoil. Now, you can do it with a grow tent, obviously that's gonna be much more expensive, but tinfoil will do the same thing. If you can do a tinfoil bottom, that's going to reflect the light, refract the light from onto the bottom of the leaves, or if you can even do a box setup where you can tinfoil the sides around it and have the light sitting on top, you will get pretty much 365 uh, type refraction of the light. This is an ideal setup. I have, I have done this before when I didn't have the proper um, lighting in order to do seedlings. And I did this with tomato seedlings and it worked great. So how do you know if the regular light bulb is intense enough or if it is working? What are the signs that you're going to see if it's not working properly? Well, it's going to be two main things. It's going to be leggy seedlings, meaning really floppy or um, really long internodes between where the, the leaves are, the true leaves. And you'll know when this happens. You'll know exactly when this happens. Or you will have very light green leaves. Like I'm talking lime-ish green type leaves. That is a sign that your light is not intense enough. If this is the case, it's one of two things. First off, the light isn't new enough. I know that sounds funny, but with compact, fluor compact fluorescence 
or fluorescent light bulbs, this can be the case. The newer the bulb, the better. With LEDs, this may not be the case. So therefore, it actually could be the distance that you have the light, meaning you may need to shorten that distance if possible and the temperature allows for it. The other factor would be that the plant itself needs really intense light and you may find this to be the case with cacti seeds or succulent seeds or succulent um, propagation type things. Anything that needs really intense sunlight may cause this. But in my experience, I have never seen it with even peppers or tomatoes. Generally, they all kind of do okay. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope it encouraged you to try regular light bulbs. And the purpose of the video is to help people. I mean, not everyone's rich. And I know, I already know this video is going to get a lot of comments saying, we'll just purchase the good light bulbs or save up for a proper light. And that's not always possible for people and I hope folks understand that not everyone is in a position to have these intense lights and I I understand that I fully understand that the other thing is that because of last year and now this year a lot of people are just starting to get into gardening so they don't want to spend a ton of money on this lighting setup that they're never going to use if they can just use an at-home light bulb then that is what they want to use. So don't feel discouraged and don't feel lame for getting a regular light bulb. If it's going to encourage you to start a garden and get some food security in your life, then please do it um, and enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, share it with anyone who may want to know more. My dogs are currently having Battle Royale slash Spartan War in the living room that I need to go break up. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.